Hey, it's nice to finally be able to play the greatest mod ever made. Am I right, comrades? <laughs> I'll see you here I come. Anyway. Stalin, baby. Let's get it! Woo! This mod was originally released in August 9th, 2018. Personally, we recommend playing Exit Music Redux instead. I wouldn't recommend that. I say fuck you if you want me to play EMR. Never tell me to do that. It's like, man, this brings back a lot of memories. Yes, it surely does, man. It surely does. You find it? Yeah, yeah, I know. This mod has been re-released by Wretched Team, so people don't have to look too hard to find it. Nothing's been changed or added, bar what was necessary to make it releasable. The music, some backgrounds, take it as it is. Yeah, it had like a copyright issue, that's why it got taken down. But, hey, that's all fixed now. Monday, baby. It's the day of the festival. Of all days, I expected this to be the one where I'd be walking to school with Sayori. But Sayori isn't answering her phone. I consider going to her house to wake her up. It's not a big deal to at least wait for her, or help her wake up. Even the simple gesture of, walk, of walking her to school makes her really happy. Besides, I told her yesterday that things will be the same as they always have been. That all she needs and what I... That's, that's all she needs and what I want to give her. The hell with it. I'll go get her. Yes, yeah, sir, get your ass up. I grabbed the cupcakes Natsuki and I made yesterday and I make my way to Sayori's. I reach Sayuri's house and knock on the door. I don't expect an answer since he's not picking up our phone either. Like yesterday, I open the door and let myself in. Oh, you don't gently open the door? She really is a heavy sleeper. Yes, yeah, Sayuri, you know, she's known to sleep for like 8, 18 hours a day, bro. She's like a fucking bear hibernating and shit. I swallow. I can't believe I ended up doing this after all. Waking her up in her own house. Isn't that more like something a boyfriend would do? In any case, it just feels right. Outside Sayori's room, I knock on her door. Sayori! Wake up, dummy! There's no response. I really didn't want to have to enter her room like this. Isn't it kind of a breach of privacy? But she really leaves me no choice. I gently open the door. Say, re. Hey, ain't there like supposed to be a rope here or something? Oh wait, that's right. Uh, in the uh, in the main game, they didn't actually put a rope in there. Stalin. Sayori stands at the foot of her bed, a long rope in her hand. Yeah, I that, I really see that long rope in her hand. It's in either hand. <laughs> it's tied into a hangman's noose. Yeah, I can I can really see that. In the shock of the moment, I release my grip on the cupcakes. What the fuck? It it's not what it look. It's not what. It like hell is not what it looks like. I, I'm sorry, Stalin. I can't believe this. Sorry, wouldn't do something like this. Jesus, Sayori. I should have known it was this bad. Sayori drops the news to the floor. Sayori, why haven't you talked to anybody about this? I. I don't want to waste people's time. You're not wasting anybody's time. We all just want you to be happy, like you've made us. You... You really deserve to be happy. I know you don't think that now, but... Well... It's the truth. And I'm determined to help... Every, help you every step of the way. But to start, you NEED to talk about this. I... I can't. I just... There's a short pause. 
all is silent, aside from Sayori stopping. I... I was about to do it, Stalin. I have never seen you again. Sayori, could you imagine if I found you like that? Yeah, if only you could have imagined. I... 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 Sayori, listen. It doesn't matter what you're going through. You always have a reason to stay with us. Even if, even if there's only one thing worth living for to you, then you need to hold on to that. And I know there is. You told me yourself yesterday. Stalin. She releases her grip on me and backs away. We know it'll be tough, but I'll be there for you. We all will. No matter what. Stalin, don't. Now, listen to me. You need to talk to somebody professional about this. I'm not taking no for an answer, Sayori. I don't think I... I'm ready. We can, we can go another time. Not a chance. You seriously need professional help as soon as possible. We're leaving now. I... I don't... I don't know if I can. Sorry, do it! Just do it! For me, if not for yourself. She sniffles, wiping her face with her sleeve. Okay. Come on, let's go. To the doctors. We'll take the bus. Stalin. The festival. Screw the festival. You're more important to me than that. Well, I need to get changed first. Uh-oh. Of course. I nod and I take a step outside the door, reaching down to pick up the rope first, taking it with me just in case. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. She gently nods, shutting the door in my face. What if she has another one? Come on! She could have she could have planned for this. Who knows? This could be all an elaborate ruse. It's like we just he just walks out of the door. He's like, oh wait a second, walks back in, she's fucking hanging. I'm a little anxious leaving her alone right after something like this. Regardless, she needs her privacy. And that's and you need your privacy too. That's why this stream is sponsored by NordVPN. JK, they would never sponsor me. No one will ever sponsor me. It's tough. I kneel down, beginning to clean up the cupcake massacre, littering the floor with a towel. Asuki is going to kill me, not unless her father gets to her first. <laughs> I return downstairs and untie the noose, dropping the loose rope in the trash. I linger downstairs for a minute or two before heading back upstairs. Wait, you still left the rope in her house? <laughs> She's probably ready by now. I knock on Sayuri's door and she answers. Ready? Sayuri nods once, her eyes glued on the floor. This is what's best for me, right? Stares at me, expectant of an answer. I feel uneasy, but answer anyway. I know it is. Come on now, let's get going. I'm sitting down in a waiting room outside of the doctor's office, patiently waiting for Sayuri to return. It's like, bro, since when does like psychiatrists or shit like that, therapists have like walk-in visits? I'm anxious. My phone buzzes quietly. I remember that today was supposed to be the day of the festival. A text is from Monica. Where are you? I have to reply. I'm busy, bitch. Really, Stalin? Please don't tell me you got cold feet about the poems or something. It's a bit more serious than that. What's going on? I don't know if I can tell you right now, but it's serious, okay? You gotta believe me. <sighs> Fine. Just hurry up and bring Sayori with you. 
I'll look up at the door. I don't think I'll be doing that. <laughs> Through the small window, I can see Sayuri breaking down in her chair, her head resting on, on the doctor's desk. I feel terrible, knowing that I let her reach such a point due to my own negligence. Yeah, MC, you really are just the worst. Behind me, the door that leads to the entrance, entrance to my waiting room swings open, and a couple of nurses walk by. But my phone buzzes again in my hand, and I turn my attention back to it. It's just me and Yuri here, damn it! Why? Where's Natsuki? I don't know. Please get here quick and bring Sayuri, okay? It's a personal issue. I can't promise anything, but I'll try to get to the festival before it's over, okay? Okay. A couple of minutes of idle waiting pass before I get another message from her. Forget it. Everyone's here already and they're waiting. We have to cancel. I return the phone to my pocket, running my hands through my hair. Why now? I feel terrible for Sayori. The fact that she's in such pain right now and how oblivious I was to all of it. But on the other hand, I also feel like I've put Monica and Yuri on the spot in front of all our classmates. Monica and Yuri? That reminds me of something that Monica told me. Where is Natsuki? Suddenly, the door to the waiting room opens again and another nurse wa walks by. However, she's accompanied by somebody familiar. Bruh! Bruh! Momento? Natsuki, is that you? What happened? Natsuki, are you okay? Exactly, that's what I just said, MC. Ah, oh, well, okay. <laughs> Don't even say a word to me, just run out of here. She quickly turns and runs back the way she came, exiting the hospital in tears. It's like, bruh, it's kinda cringe, not gonna lie. That's a pretty beta moment. I jump out of my seat to speak to her, but I notice the nurse staring at me suspiciously. I'm like, hey, yo, nurse, <laughs> back the fuck up before I do to you the same thing that Natsuki has, bruh. I take a seat once more, anxious now about Natsuki's well-being as well as Tayori's. Uh, excuse me. What happened to her? She explains how Natsuki wandered into the hospital, bloody and bruised, looking for help. Poor Natsuki. She then cautiously asked if I had anything to do with Natsuki's injuries. Thank Christ, no! I just saw her! I don't even know what's going on! I had to bring my friend here. She tried to, like, uh, game end herself. If you catch my drift. I stopped myself. And also, I want me to talk about her struggle so openly. Not now, anyway. Well, listen, it, it's serious, okay? I bite my lip as the nurse continues on her way. My phone buzzes again. Are you sure you don't know where Sayuri and Natsuki are? Well, I know where Natsuki was about 30 seconds ago. As to where she is right now, I have no idea. I already told you, I don't know. I can't tell her about Natsuki either. Chances are, it's her own personal issue and she'll deal with it in her own way. Still, maybe I should text her. I mean, bro, it looks like she just got beat up in the fucking you know, back alley of a fucking Denny's, bro. Like, come on, she looked like she just got fucking mugged, and you're like, yeah, it's, I, that, that's her own issue, man. Let her deal with it. It doesn't matter anyway. We had to cancel our performance. People are complaining about the cupcakes not being here. Oh yeah, that was my bad. My bad. Here he's gone for some fresh air. Jesus. I'm sorry, okay? My hands are tied here. I can't do anything to help right now. Okay, whatever. Hey, yo, Monica, you a bitch. All right. Thanks a lot, Stalin. I sigh. 
Now I've pissed Monica off because I couldn't bring myself to tell her what happened. I decided to text Natsuki quickly about what I just saw. A couple of minutes passed with no response. The message doesn't even mark as red. The office door swings open and Sayuri emerges. Again, since when do like psychiatrists have walk-in visits? Stalin, are you okay? Not really. I'm just stressed out. How are you? I... I don't really want to talk about it. Are you sure? Because I'm here for you. I can just... Stalin, please. Can we just drop this? I just don't want to make a big deal out of it, especially in front of the other club members. I stand up. Sorry, I don't think you understand how big of a deal this really is. You nearly... You nearly killed yourself. I think you should go home and rest for a couple days, okay? I guess I'll have to, right? Hehe. <laughs> Sorry, let's a small bout of almost nervous laughter. It's a good idea, at least. You know that. But what about the festival? I hesitate. I don't want Sayuri to feel like it's her fault about the performance, about that the performance was cancelled, so I decided to start with Natsuki's absence. Well, Natsuki didn't actually show up either. Monica had to cancel the performance, unfortunately. You didn't... You didn't tell her, didn't, did you? About... I didn't. Unless you want to talk to her about it yourself, she won't know. Okay? Sorry, nods. I think I'll tell her. So she knows why... Why her plans for the festival were ruined. I can tell what she's going to say. It wasn't your fault, Sayori. None of this is. Sorry, grasped my hands tightly, crushing it in a vice-like grip. You can talk to her if you really want to. Hell, she'll probably be able to give better advice than me. Maybe. Did you tell my parents? I sigh. <sighs> I did. Yeah. Sorry, though. I felt like I had to, Ed. Thanks. I was scared that I had to tell them myself. Sorry, glances downward to the pristine floor. I love you, Stalin. I... Despite her condition, I can't lie to her. It would be unfair on her end to have her hopes disrupted like that. I keep my mouth shut. Rich, bro, you can just say I love you too, but like not in that way. I don't want you getting confused. Like, come on. Is that so much to add? Uh, so much to do, man. A minute or so passes. Yeah, M yeah, MCs, uh, MCs and mods are always fucking bitches. Anyway, we should get going. There's no point going to school now. Why? What time is it? It's about midday. We missed the festival, and if we turn up now, Monica's just gonna get mad at us. Come on, I'll take you home. We can talk some more there. She gently nods, following my lead. We exit the hospital and ride a bus back to her house. I decide to stay with Sayuri in her house, just to make sure she's feeling better. We have at least a few hours together, but we spend that time talking and watching shows together. Her mother arrives first, thanking me for letting her know what happened. I tell her that it's no problem. She tells me that Sayuri's father is on his way, and that I'm free to leave if I want to. After I'm sure she's safe, I leave her with her mother and head home. Entering the kitchen, I flick the light on and start to make myself a sandwich, cutting up a tomato. However, I start to wonder about Natsuki. Yeah, I remember the time I spent with her here. A little scuffle over the cupcakes, icing. Yeah, that, that was a pretty 
epic gamer moment right there. Good times, man. Good times. But that bruise? Her nosebleed? What the hell happened to her? It's like, bro, did she go to Detroit? And who in their right mind would do that to her? I don't know, someone from Detroit. Possible reasons for her injuries begin to circulate inside my mind. Maybe she just fell over. Yeah, she just like fell over right on her face, man. Did all that. She could have gotten into a fight with another classmate of ours. I mean, that definitely is a possibility, but... I mean, wasn't it like midday when she like came into the hospital, man? Like, come on. Or maybe... No. Surely not. Maybe I'm just overreacting to the situation. It's been a rough day, after all. What? What is it, MC? Say it already. But something she told me while we were reading manga together sticks in my head. Oh, sorry, mangoes. We're eating mangoes together. I don't even know what my dad would do if he found this. I shiver at the thought. It's the only real reason I come up with for Natsuki's terrible injuries. Really, it's the only real reason? As I said, Detroit! I also noticed that while I was distracted, I accidentally cut my finger open while slicing the tomato. Ah, crap. I wrapped my finger in a paper towel, letting the few drops of blood soak into it. Throwing the paper, to paper towel in the trash, I think back to Natsuki. I decide that I'll ask her about her father next time I see her. Even if she assures me that I'm wrong, at least I'll know. I eat my sandwich and head upstairs to my room. I collapse onto my bed, exhausted from the stress that the day has brought to me. I drift into unconsciousness within minutes. Yeah. Ah, oh, we're skipping Tuesday and just heading straight to Wednesday, that's right. Oh, Yuri time! Uh oh, hi Stalin, number 15. I'm back at the literature club. Craning my neck, I look around the club room. It's empty. You and I are the only people here. That usually leaves some bad things. I leave the classroom door open, expecting the other members to arrive shortly. Hey, Yuri. I sit down on the desk next to her, unpacking my stationery kit as she did with her own. Listen, I know that Monica canceled the club yesterday, so I didn't get the chance to talk with to you. So I just wanted to say that I'm sorry that she had to let our little presentations go. D don't worry about it, Stalin. Monica told me that it wasn't your fault you couldn't come. She said it was something serious. Yeah, it was a bit of an emergency. I decided to downplay the situation in case Yuri doesn't know the full story. I don't want to worry her after all. Yeah, we don't want to worry Yuri. Worry Yuri. <laughs> Are you alright? Me? I'm fine. Don't worry about me. Like, at all. We don't want Yuri to worry. It was something else. Some- oh, it was someone else. Someone close. I see. Well, I- I hope everything works out well for you and your friend. Number 14. I hope so too, Yuri. A moment passes of complete silence. Yuri is sat down at our desk, still reading. The class is still empty, aside from us. So, uh, Yuri. Yuri jumps in her chair a little, startled by my interrupting the silence. Y yes You haven't seen Monica today, have you? Uh, I'm afraid not, Stalin. She's been in a mood since the festival, unfortunately. Yeah, Monica's a bitch, we all know that. She a thought? N not that I meant to be so rude about it. It- it did- mean a lot to her after all. 
I know it did. That was why I wanted to speak to her. Maybe if I explained why Cyrus and I were absent, then she might forgive me. Well, the both of us. But I promised Sayuri I wouldn't say anything to Monica. Has she? Has Monica said anything about me since the festival? N not really. I mean, she did complain that the three of you were gone. I was kind of thankful that we got to cancel. Not to worry about this plans though, I never do such a thing intentionally. I know you wouldn't, Yuri. Don't worry. Yeah, you're just a sweet angel, Yuri. You could say you're a fallen angel. I can tell you're too good of a person to be so mean. Okay, MC, you don't have to keep simping. Besides, you have no reason to want to sabotage her like that. Right? Yuri falters for a moment, lost for words. Not at all. It's just that... I don't even know if I should be telling you this. Well, I overheard Monica talking about you and Sayuri to one of her friends. Uh, I wasn't eavesdropping though. That's literally the definition of eavesdropping. What did she say? I heard her mention that the only good reason to cancel on her festival was if somebody died. I mean, well, we were pretty close to having that happen, so... I, yeah, I guess close to, well, you know, uh, close is only good enough in like horseshoes and hand grenades. I'm pretty sure that's the phrase. What? Monica wouldn't say something like that, right? She's a sweetheart. Okay, MC, come on. Come on, we all know. We all know where Monica is positioned on the totem pole. She's dead last. She's anything but a sweetheart. Besides, not only is it egocentric, it's insensitive. Wow, like, Monica could never be insensitive or egocentric. <laughs> Even if she didn't know about Sayuri, it felt like it was too close to reality. Wow, that's harsh. I doubt she meant it, though. What I mean to say is, she was in no position to say that. Number 13. I understand that she was frustrated about it, but there's never a good reason to say such horrible things about- Yuri's words had caught in her throat as she retreats through the confines of her book. I turn and see Monica standing in the doorway, giving Yuri an intense glare. Oh no, Yuri, you fucking done for. She doesn't dare to beat Monica's gaze. Instead, concentrating on the portrait of Markov. I wish I could do the same. What do you mean? You can do the same. Literally, just scoot, just take a chair, sit right next to Yuri, and be like, "Oh well, yeah." Just start, you know, looking at the book as well. Like, la 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 la, Monica's not here. I swallow. She huffs and starts talking. Where's Sayori? And Natsuki? She stares at Yuri intently. Monica's presence intimidates me. I... I don't know, Monica. I haven't seen them. She gives me an acidic stare, her emerald eyes piercing my confident facade. Is Sarah tell her about the hospital? Are you sure? I... Yeah? Alright then. How come you weren't at the festival, Stalin? Alright, I I had a family emergency, alright? Bitch, like, back off. At this point, I'm practically lying to her face to keep Sayuri's secret safe until she feels comfortable confining Monica. Then again, I've known Sayuri for so long, she's pretty much part of my chosen family at this point. She's like a sister to me. So it's more... Stretching the truth than it is lying to her. Well, that's what I'll tell myself anyways. Right. Monica's not having any of this. Even if she doesn't know what's actually going on, she must know I'm lying to her. But for Sayori's sake, I have to keep face for her. I can't betray her trust. If she finds out I told something that private 
told someone that private information. Monica's demeanor suddenly changes, and she looks at the two of us with a wry smile on her face. Okay, you two. Since we're the only ones here, I decided that we're going to have to cancel today's meeting. Hopefully there won't be any more emergencies or absence this tomorrow. So what, if one person is absent, you're just going to cancel everything? The emphasis on those words worried me, due to how aggressively she spoke them. That's all. You can leave now. Yuri looks up from her book guiltily and packs up, silently dropping the portrait of Markov and her stationery kit into her bag. She scurries out of the classroom without a word. Monica turns her attention to me, expecting me to pack up. I nod and pick up my bag, exiting into the hallway without another word. Walking through the school's dormant hallways, I reach the door to the courtyard, but stop, placing my head in my palm. I forgot my own stationery, I'm an idiot! I return to the club room hastily to find my leather pencil case opened. As I swipe it into my bag, I realize my pen is missing. No! Not my pen! Yuri, you bitch! A quick glance around, and I conclude that I must have lost it earlier. Earlier, Yeah, that, that must be it. Returning to the courtyard, I notice Yuri. She's moving hurriedly, clutching her bag tightly against her chest and wiping her face with her sleeve. Yuri? She doesn't notice me at first, so I jog to catch up to her. Yuri, what's wrong? Oh. Hi. It, it's... nothing. Really? Y yeah. I I I'm uh, all right. Really, Bruh. <laughs> Matt, bruh, I'm just sitting here trying to stutter all that. It's like, bitch, speak. I don't believe her. My eyes meet Yuri's for a brief moment before she before she looks away. I can tell something terrible happened in the few minutes we were separated. But what could have brought her to this state? I take hold of her shoulder to try and slow her down, so she can face me. She jumps, but she complies as she comes to a halt at the school's entrance. Yuri, whatever's on your mind, you can tell me. I am your friend, after all. It, it's not m much. It w was just something that m m Monica said. Monica? What could she have said? Well, if I don't mind asking, what did she say? I... I... I don't re really feel comfortable to talking about it. If you're okay with that... Monica must have said something really hurtful. It's fine, really. I understand. Well, if you're sh sure about that... You're always welcome to talk to me, though. I... I guess... It'd be nice if you walked w with me... But maybe we c can talk on the, the way... Number 12. Sorry isn't here. I've got some time to kill. Besides, I feel like I can't refuse. Not when she's so emotional. No, MC, bro, don't, don't do this. Don't be a white knight. Yeah, okay. I'm sure that'll be nice. Following Yuri, I take the opposite turn from my usual walk home. Soon enough, I find myself in a part of town that I rarely visit. The walk between us is mostly silent. Yuri occasionally sniffles, wiping out her face. What the hell did Monica say to her? I decided to make some light conversation. Something about writing might be nice. She does take comfort in talking about subjects she's passionate about, after all. Doesn't anybody? S so, Stalin, how do you like writing poems? She must have read my mind. Well... I usually like to listen to music while I write. 
Even if it's just quiet playing... Even if it's just quiet playing softly in the background. You know what I mean? Really? Most of the time, I just feel like I can only write it in silence. It leaves me at one with my mind and lets me express my inner thoughts. Though sometimes, I do like listening to a soft piano track. Don't the lyrics alter the way you write? Well, yeah, but I guess that's what I'm looking for. Most of the time, anyway. I like for the mood of the music to affect the way I write, really. Unless it's something I'm especially passionate about. Then I can write in just about any condition. That actually sounds like an effective technique. I shall adapt this into my programming. I'll be sure to try it out. Number 11. At this point, Yuri seems to have perked up. Her eyes dried. I decided to continue the conversation, as I still don't know how much longer it'll take to reach her house. I know Sari likes to hum a little tune to herself while she writes. I wonder what Natsuki does. Natsuki. I've been trying to contact her since I saw her in the hospital, but she hasn't responded to my messages. She hasn't showed up to school at all this week, either. God. What could have happened? Was it really her father? I don't want to believe it, but the pieces fit so well together. Her absence? Her inability to contact anybody? What she said about him? But most of all, the bruises. I bite my lip as I feel my breathing growing heavy and my blood reaching a boiling point. If I find out he laid a finger on her, I'll... I'll do absolutely nothing. Because, you know, MCs and mods are complete pussies and bitches. Except for the one, in, I believe, behind closed doors. He was actually a pretty, you know, giga chad. I'll... Wait, was it behind closed doors? Uh, it, was, it was one of those mods. Maybe it was Fruits of the Literature Club. I don't know, it was one of those mods from like way back in the day. So, I'll be honest. I don't disrespect her or anything. Yuri's words derail my train of thought. Natsuki's poems are just a little too simple for my liking. I suppose they lack a certain edge. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. I spaced out. I spaced out. Again. Yeah. Edge. Of course you would say that. Speaking of Natsuki, however... I think we just passed her house then. Wait, what? Wait, what? Wait, which one? Yuri looks at me, a little surprised by my urgency. Regardless, she points out the house to me. It's that house, if I recall correctly. Right, thanks for that. Why do you need to know? I don't really want to worry Yuri- <laughs> I don't really want to worry Yuri about Natsuki. Yeah, we don't need Yuri worrying. Well, I guess I just want it- to write. The rest of the journey is made in silence. I worry that you're. I worry that Yuri got the wrong. Bro, how many times is the words Yuri and worry gonna be in the same sentence? But there's nothing much I can do. Eventually, we arrive, signaling her wave goodbye. You know style Oh, whoa, 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 hey, 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 hey. Why are you looking at me like that? You know, Stalin, you're quite different when no one's around. Whoa. When it's just the two of us. 
Just the two of us. Yuri falls silent for a moment, lost in thought. Listen, I love to stay and talk. I, I really would, but I. Uh, oh, it, it's fine. I get it. You have places to be. Well, I mean, like, okay, like here, here's the thing. I know you think like I'm in some sort of relationship with Natsuki, right? But it, you gotta think with some common sense here. If I was in a relationship, I wouldn't be asking you where her house was. I... I kind of would have already known that. Fred darts towards the direction of Natsuki's house for a moment. I mean, I was more or less talking about my house, but okay. It's fine. I got some writing to do anyway. She turns and starts to walk to the door. No, please don't get the wrong idea, Yuri. I'm not really, like... I'm not gonna smash that, you know, lolly anyways. At least not yet. That comes later. It's fine, Stalin. I can take a hint. I'll see you tomorrow. No, you really can't. <laughs> Everybody as socially inept as a fucking turtle. I know that made no sense, but whatever. Before I can finish my explanation, she's already entered her house. I feel terrible, knowing that Yuri probably blames herself for my rejection. But I leave quickly regardless. As I turn the corner and approach Natsuki's house, my attention is directed upwards. On the second floor balcony, a large, heavily built man leans against the railing, smoking a cigarette. Is that her dad? Jesus Christ, is Jason born? <laughs> He's on the phone and I can't help but overhear his conversation. The man mutters something about having business to attend to, but promises to be wherever the caller wants within the hour. My stomach sinks. Business? If he means what I think he does, what could he possibly mean? He's like, bro, what do you think he's like in the fucking mafia or something? Back trucking Yuri's route, I make my way back to the school and then to my house from there. Fumbling with my keys, I unlock the door. I enter my bedroom and hurriedly get changed out of my uniform and into some dark clothing. Hey, time for the stakeout mission, baby. Man, this really is Detroit. We're breaking and entering into people's houses. A short jog brings me back to her house, and I take a seat within the, a bus stop on the street opposite of her, staking her out her father. I ponder over if he's already gone. Perhaps, and I missed him. Perhaps, and I missed him leaving. Or maybe he's still dealing with business. After a few minutes, however, I'm proving wrong by the sound of an engine revving up and a new expensive looking performance car emerging from the driveway of, a Na of Natsuki's house. Man, he whipping out coming out here in the damn Lambo. He speeds away and around the corner within seconds, and once I'm certain that it's gone, I move over to Natsuki's house and ring the doorbell. I wait. Nothing. I press down on it again. Once more. No answer. Growing ever anxious, I knock on the door heavily, aggressively banging my bald fist into the door. A moment of silence. Then from a second floor window, I see a curtain pulled back, a flash of pink hair, and just as quickly, it's replaced once more. I watch it intensely waiting for any sign of movement until I hear the sound of a door chain being unhinged and the deadbolt turning. My heart is ready to jump out of my chest. I don't know what I'll be greeted by, but I wait nervously. Stalin? What the hell are you doing here? It's Natsuki. Thank God! It's like, who else would it be? Natsuki, are you alright? What happened to your bruises? Like, yeah, exactly. It's only been like three days. You must have applied some really good makeup. 
One bruise is Stalin. I... I don't know what you're talking about. Hehe. <laughs> She's playing dumb. Even though I saw her. What could have happened to her? For her to be so devoted to keeping it a secret. Before I can reply, she grabs me by the collar of my shirt and yanks me into her foyer. Yeah, baby! H hey! H how did you... <laughs> Know where I live. Now's not the time for that. Has she been drinking? Is it? Oh no, she's still partaking of the copium. Better question is, where have you been? I I haven't been feeling very good the past few days. No be no need to be so mean about it. Does she expect me to believe that after what I saw? Natsuki, I know something's wrong. I saw you at the hospital, remember? Oh, th that. She giggles. That, that was nothing. Don't worry about it. About that, okay? There's much worse to be worried about. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, what do you mean by that? C come with me. I can do with another glass anyway. She grips my arm loosely and tries to move me along with her through her house. As she moves, she begins erratically wobbling as though she's having trouble walking. She holds tighter onto my arm for support. She stumbles and nearly trips. I catch her, wrapping my arms around her chest and pulling her up tight, upright. Hey, <laughs> thanks. That's not like her. Normally, if I grabbed her for whatever reason, she'd freak out and call me gross or something like that. Yeah, it's almost like she's fucking drunk. But here, she didn't even flinch or say anything about it. It's almost like she's been partaking of the copium. Something feels off. I release my grip on her reluctantly as she's still staggering her way along. I assist in moving her. Now up the stairs, making sure she doesn't fall and knock us both back onto the steps. We finally make it up the stairs and Natsuki guides me to our room. Her room is a mess. Our floor is littered with small, ripped up pieces of paper. Picking up one. Picking one up, I recognize one of the protagonists of Parfait Girls. The cover is a heavily laminated cardstock, and it's ripped in two. There's no way Natsuki was able to tear that in half herself. Bro, you know how strong she is, bro? She could literally carry a fucking oven. Not only that, she but she has no reason to either. Okay, yeah, you got me there. But I could think of someone who does. There was a large bottle of red copium. Cap opened, lying on its side on her bed. Only a small drip escapes, staining her bedsheet crimson. There can't be much left of it. I know she'd been drinking, I could tell from the moment she opened the door. I'll see. You haven't drunk all of that by yourself, right? She looks flustered. Of course I have, you dummy! It's a bit much, isn't it? Eh, that doesn't matter. Haven't finished. Haven't even finished anyway. She retrieves the bottle from the bed. I reach a hand out to take it from her. Natsuki. No, ah, it's mine. She holds the bottle just out of reach and tries to push me away. She's too weak. However, I simply move her arm aside. Come on, that's enough. Eh, Stalin, please. I need this. Something about the way she said that sends a pang of dread through my body. Before I can reach my arm out to stop her a second time, the remainder of the bottle's contents of is go are gone. Looking at a bedside drawer, I see Natsuki's phone. It is overturned, so I can only see her case. The case is glittery and pink. This drink is nice, Stalin. Yeah, copium is epic. 
Natsuki, talk to me. I know something's going on with your dad. Yeah, he's kind of cringe. He's kind of a beta male. Please, I just want to help. But I can't if you won't tell me what's going on. This is all the help I need. She collapses onto her bed and giggles. I haven't felt this happy in so, so long. I grow only more uneasy hearing that. If this is the length she has to go in order to escape her demon, just how bad is the demon she's trying to escape from? As Natsuki begins to snore, her grip on the wine bottle falters and it rolls off the bed onto her floor. To my surprise, it doesn't shatter. I mean, wine bottles are pretty uh, strong. Especially if it's like those really big ones. Instead, it rolls under her bed. And besides, that ain't even like a long drop anyways. What's that, like a couple feet? Shaking my head, I bend down to pick up the bottle that rolled under her bed. Reaching my hand underneath the bed, I can feel the wine bottle. Oh, sorry, the copium bottle. And something else. What the? I pull both from beneath the bed. Placing the wine bottle on her bedside drawer next to Natsuki's phone. Take a look at what wine egg recovered. It's a white container. And made of plastic. Wait. This isn't right. This is a bottle of super copium. Looking for a description. I inhale sharply as I realize that these are... Ibuprofen tablets. I turned to look at Natsuki, fast asleep as I worried. Oh my fucking god! I desperately checked the label on the back for a date of prescription. Two... Two days ago? She's trying to overdose! Ruh, ruh. An icy sweat runs down my forehead as I begin to panic, running my hands through my hair. She stops snoring. I violently shake Natsuki's seemingly lifeless body. Please, Natsuki! Please wake up! I grab her hand. It's clammy and much colder than it should be. I put my ear next to her mouth to check if she's still breathing. Thankfully, she is, but it's faint. I take her by her shoulders and pull her into a sitting position. I crush down next to her, supporting her. Natsuki! I contemplate calling an ambulance, but I'm worried that I'll, it'll draw too much attention to our house. The hell with it. I don't care what happens so long as she lives. I reach into my pocket and... Fuck! Fuck! My phone isn't there. I reach onto her bedside table, gripping Natsuki's phone tightly. I bring it to my face and press the power button. The screen lights up, but from behind a shattered display. I try to make an emergency call, but the screen is unresponsive to my touch. Dropping the phone, I pull Natsuki in close to me, hoping and praying that she wakes up. I begin to sob, terrified for her life. But Natsuki begins to cough, erratically. I'm simultaneously panicked and relieved. She opens her eyes and unsteadily rises to her feet, with my assistance. Natsuki! Please, tell me you're okay. I... I... She falls silent. Hey, yo, bitch! Jesus! My nose is assaulted by the stench of bile and wine as it splashes onto the floor in front of me. I realize that she got some on my arm. It... it stings. Yeah, it's stomach acid, what'd you expect? That shit's more acidic than battery acid. Well, at least that would have gone the deadly mixture out of her body. But she's still in trouble. Asuki turns to me, half conscious, pleading. Stalin, help me! She stumbles back, landing in a sitting position on her bed. I. I don't want to die. Look at me, okay? You won't. You hear me? I won't let you, God. Natsuki, listen to me, okay? I'll be right back. She nods weakly, barely aware of her surroundings. I need to find 
her something to eat. Hopefully, it should absorb what's left of the alcohol. Bolting down the stairs, I reach the kitchen within seconds. I swing open every cupboard I can see, along with the, the refrigerator. Nothing. Not even a slice of bread. When did Nazi last eat? Exit in the kitchen, I look all around the house. Hurrying back to Natsuki, I check up on her. She's as pale as ever, but she's conscious at least. I weakly raise her head to look at me. Hey, hey, Natsuki. I need you to pay attention to me, okay? Just whatever you do, don't go to sleep, okay? Please! She tries to mutter something, but it's unintelligible. I have no choice but to leave her again. I've searched everywhere in the house beside her father's bedroom. As I approach the door, I notice that it's locked. I ram the door multiple times before the frame gives way. Whoa! I tumble onto the floor, now littered with splinters. I rise to my feet and flick the lights on. As I search the room for anything that could possibly aid Natsuki, something catches my eye. A few bags from various restaurants around town. I tear them open to find nothing but empty takeout containers. I return to Natsuki's room. We have to go now. Oh, okay. I help her to her feet, wrapping her arm around over my shoulder, holding her hand in place. She'll make it. I'll make sure of it. Where are we going? Somewhere safe. Where are we going from here? We make our way down the stairs. I keep Natsuki on her feet, though it's proving to be more difficult as she fades in and out of consciousness. Starvation mixed with alcohol and painkillers. It's clearly taking a toll on her. But she isn't dead. We make it to the front door. Time feeling like a lost luxury, I shut it I shut it behind us, moving through the porch. I can feel Natsuki's tears soaking through my shirt. We reach the gate and I set her down while I open it. I scoop Natsuki off the grass and close the gate behind us. Holding Natsuki close, I move as fast as I can down the street. As we approach the glow of the street lights, as we approach the glow of the street lights, I begin to feel relieved. I loosen my grip on Natsuki. Can you walk? Y yes I I think. I set her down for a moment. Her knees buckle. Again I wrap her arm around me. Let's go. Okay. I end up supporting her the entire way through town. There's nobody about to call me out for looking suspicious. I'm almost glad she has such a small figure. It only makes it so much easier to... That's why she's so small. Her father's been leaving her malnourished and living on fast food. You're only now realizing this, huh? Jesus Christ. Finally, I recognize the familiar view of my house. I set Natsuki, I set Natsuki down on my front step. I fumble with my keys for a moment, finally able to unlock the door. Help Natsuki through. She's safe, from her father at least. I bring her to the kitchen and set her down if, on one of the chairs. Ah, Stalin. Why did, did you help me? How did you know where I... Don't worry about all that right now. Let's just get you settled in for the night. I'm worried that it'll be longer than one night. I have a spare bedroom in my house. She'll be able to sleep there. I search through my pantry and my fridge for something she may like. I decided to just make some toast and chicken noodle soup. Is that chicken noodle? I haven't had that so long. Her words break my heart. How long? How long has she lived like this? I watch the clock as Natsuki eats. It's late. Now that the immediate panic is over, 
realize that poor Nasuke is still drenched in her own stomach acid. Nasuke, I'm going to need you to get changed. W what? Not here, silly. I mean, you can get changed in the spare bedroom. But, but I don't have any of my clothes. You'll have to borrow some of mine. Okay. But only because I have to. Hey, that's my girl. Asuka seems to be in much better shape after her meal. She stands up on her own accord to return her bowl to the kitchen counter. She moves slowly, but deliberately. Despite the stink of bile clogging up my nose, I'm relatively calm too. Asuka's skin tone has returned to normal, mostly. She still looks scarred by the night's experiences. And nearly overdosing on copium kinda does that to you. Once she returns empty-handed, I ask her to follow me to her room. Come on, I'll show you where it is. Asuki timidly complies, wrapping her arms around me. But this time, it hurts. I inhale sharply. Are you okay, Stalin? My shoulder is in pain. Oh yeah, you like fucking rammed through the door, man. The adrenaline of the situation has settled. Maybe barging through that door was a bad idea, exactly. Not only because of the pain, but the damage it caused too. When Nowski's dad returns to the house... Yeah, I'm alright. Don't worry about me. Let's get you cleaned up. There's a shower in the guest room that you can use. I reach the guest room, located across the hall from my own bedroom. I motion towards the edge of the, edge of the bed. Here, sit down for just a minute. I'll be back with something comfy for you. She sits down. I rush to my bedroom, picking out one of my gray tops and a pair of jeans. When I bring them back to her room, she's struggling to take off her socks. I place her fresh clothes onto the bed and kneel down to help her take them off. She opens her mouth like she wants to say something, but reluctantly it lets me out. Asuka's been through so much today, she has next to no strength left. Thanks, Stalin. I can take it from here. Are you sure? I really don't. All the blood in my body rushes to my face. She's gonna have a shower. Is I about to indirectly tell her I wanted to help? I, I, I... Never mind. That's fine. You take your time. I decided that now wasn't the best time to question Asuke about her family. Instead, she just needs a soothing shower and some sleep. Maybe that'll take her mind off of tonight's events. Even if only for a few moments. Those few moments would do her a lot of good. As I stand to leave the room, Asuke grasps my wrist gently. Stalin! Wait! I... I want to thank you again. Don't mention it, okay? I'm just glad I got there in time. It's like, well yeah, you've stopped two suicides in the course of like three days. You're a fucking hero. Asuki stares into my eyes. Me too! How did you know where I was? I walked home with Yuri. She... she was having a bad day. So I went with her. She pointed out your place. Ever since I saw you at the hospital, you haven't left my mind. That's why I decided to go. I tried- oh, oops, my bad. I tried calling you God knows how many times, but you never answered. I cast my mind back to Natsuki's wreck of a phone. I guess I know why. I- I saw every one of your calls. I couldn't answer because of the stupid scream. When all I wanted to do was hear your voice. I couldn't. I I just wanted to go back to the club. And sit with you under the window. To read more together. Because when we do. It's the only time I really feel safe. Well, 
Not anymore. Of course. Her parfait girl mangoes were torn apart. She looks down at the ground dejectedly. Leave Natsuki to shower. After getting changed myself, I sit on the edge of my bed, gripping the volume of parfait girls that I had bought for myself on the weekend. The water stops running and I hear the ensuite door being opened and closed. I think that's how you say that. En suites. I wait a few moments before knocking on our door. Natsuki, I have something else for you. Oh, Stalin. Natsuki opens the door, looking healthy again. She's out of her dirty clothes and is now wearing my shirt along with her own pants. The top doesn't fit her well though. Huh? The shirt's massive on me. I could get you a smaller top of mine if you... I like it. You don't need to, Stalin. Are you sure? Yeah. I present the mango to her. I... I saw what happened to your copy of Parfait Girls back on, at your place. So, I thought I'd just drop my own in for you. So you can, uh, read it. If you want. Asi gives me a weak but sincere smile. She reaches out to grab the mango. I'd love to, Stalin. So I'm pulling the mango from my hands as expected. She grabs my wrist and tries to sit me down on the bed next to her. But only if we read it together. It's the least I can do to make her happy. She needs it. So do I, in a way. First time to deal with Sayori is attempting suicide. Now Natsuki. God, how terrible must her home life have been for her to want to escape it like that? Well, I can take a guess, considering the complete lack of food in her house. And her face when I star in the hospital. Christ. Uh, hey, Stalin. What? You just kind of stood there for a second, spacing out. God, you're worse than Sayori sometimes, you know. Hey! I'm sorry, okay? That's fine. I was only teasing, dummy. I know that shouldn't blame her. She doesn't know about Sayori's condition. As far as I know, she hasn't seen her at the hospital. She hasn't seen her at the hospital. Regardless, that hurt me more than it should have. I move the duvet to the side and sit down next to Natsuki. She pulls the covers over the two of us, so we're sitting up with it draped over our laps. We decided to just start the volume over again. Stalin, you're so warm. Natsuki inches closer to me. We're now shoulder to shoulder. Natsuki, can you see it okay? N not really. I inch myself down into a lying position. Natsuki joins me. Hey, Much better. My left arm is awkwardly dormant between us. I slide it under the pillow and around her. There we go. We continue to read. Man, this is so epic. Can we get an epic Pog champ in the chat? I need an anime girl that be fucking with me. A little badass bitch that gets down on her knees. Screaming out, Senpai, or she's taking the D. Baby girl, I'm a happy yelling Kimoshi. I need an anime girl that be fucking with me. A little badass bitch that gets down on her knees. Screaming out, Senpai, or she's taking the D. Baby girl, I'm a happy yelling Kimochi.